Welcome back, folks. Freedom Games is our next developer coming up. And, you know, when you have games that are, like, called Cat Cafe Manager or uh, Dog Shelter, I think we can assume that things are going to be pretty fun. So, folks, here's Freedom Games. Decided, you know what? I've dabbled in indie games. I'm gonna give this one last shot. Let's just make a game. It felt like jumping to the deep end. I realized that making games is like a real thing that you can do. <laughs> it's just so, that's the word is liberating. We owned this project. We just want to make a fun game. You have an idea of what the vision of it looks like, but then it actually coming out the other side looking like that, it's pretty rare. I co-founded the studio with uh, two of my friends. We had uh, all worked at a company that did not end up turning out like you know any of us had hoped. So coming out of that experience, the three of us, we wanted to do something that felt a little bit more authentic to who we were and what we liked. Going into it, we knew that we had complementary skill sets. Having the the kind of the core pillars of, of game design already there and having experience, we were able to cover a lot of bases. This is really the first time we've been able to pour so much of ourselves into the development of a game. I think I'm most proud of us being able to look at this game and know that we're hitting our own quality bar, especially for our first game. You think you know everything, and then at some point you go, oh wait, we didn't know how to do that part. Well, I guess we gotta figure it out. <laughs> the four of us who started the studio worked in AAA. I left to go start making indie games. So we took that opportunity to kind of use our old friend group and our old expertise to start up The Wandering Band. And it was the first time that all of us felt complete creative control. That was fun, it was a challenge, it was also scary at the beginning. On a AAA team, you have technical artists and a dozen animators. I think the biggest challenge for us was trying to learn new skills and new parts of the game development process without ever doing it before. But I wouldn't trade it away. I think it's uh, the creativity and the creative freedom is totally worth it. the retro games. These were our favorites. And we, we tried to combine a lot of different elements from different games and give it a unique touch. A shout out to our community. They helped us translate the demo. They helped us get out the words. The demo has been played over a million times. It's just great to get a community like that. They helped us make Corman what it is.
I had lived in Kyoto for a while where I'd gone to a cat cafe and it was such a surreal experience for me at the time. So we sat down and we prototyped Cat Cafe Manager. When you're petting a cat, I don't know what it is, like endorphins that are being released, like the, the good feeling that you get from that. We kind of wanted to put in the game. We live in a time that's like pretty stressful and out of control in a lot of ways. So for us, it's very important that you sort of get a cozy feeling when you get introduced to the game. Just making the Cat Cafe of your dreams. I'm from a really rural town. So is Tanner, the other lead developer on the game. We've been together for since middle school, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's no companies, right? There's no video game companies in Little Rock or the state of Arkansas. So we decided to just be the first. <laughs> to the Rescue is where you play as somebody working in a dog shelter and taking on all the responsibilities that entails. People love dogs so much, but this is also about raising awareness, right? It's, it's both of those things. There's diseases that can appear in the shelter. It's dirty and adopters only want the cutest puppies and they don't want the old dogs. Essentially, I just want people to walk away with more knowledge about the things we're representing. We've gotten a lot of people that work in real shelters that are like, I'm glad that you're doing this because a lot of people don't realize how hard the work is and how thankless it is. So 20% of every dollar that Little Rock Games makes from this game is going to be going to the Pet Finder Foundation. The game is about being hopeful that you can improve your community in some small way. I first started getting into games probably about seven or eight years old, tinkering around with game engines. I started putting games on the web, flash games and, and things like that. I always liked the idea of really silly deaths, characters getting blown to bits in like a cartoony way. It's usually an area of frustration, but when you can see your, your character's head just flying off and blood's going everywhere, it's like, <laughs> you just got nothing but humor there. Sure gonna feel bad in the morning. I come up with the idea of having like a Ninja Warrior slash Total Wipeout death competition. I was actually working two jobs at the same time as developing the game. I'd have all these fantastic ideas while I was there. You know, I'd be on the checkout just thinking about Slaughter League, and by the time I get home, I'd just be like, ah. We ended up deciding that it would be best if I worked full time on the game. This game, it sounds corny, but it's changed my life in that way. Whereas no other game had before. It's just flipped my life to where I want it to be. So to finally be able to do this as a job is just insane. I love it. This is definitely like a good, just relax, chill in the evening, play with buds, laugh at stupid stuff kind of game. I was pretty laid back in college. I did just fine, but uh, I worked on Dark Deity. I didn't work on my own work. <laughs> None of us have ever worked on games at all. So for the majority of development, we worked on it in the dorm, yeah. So we would sort of just sit in the dorm room, just like, you know, type of working away. Uh, I learned how to code for like a whole week. I just didn't leave my room, didn't eat, didn't <laughs> do anything. You know, where, where we're at, we're all 23. Two of us haven't even graduated college yet. To be at E3 is pretty exciting. Maybe 
I should raise my rates. I have failed my people. Weakness has consequences. This would make for a fine tale. thought that I would be good at making video games. My mom just sent me a picture of a drawing I did when I was like eight titled My Own Game. I was diagnosed with Asperger's autism as a child and I basically kind of just told myself, no, nah, th there's no way I could be in management. But through therapy as a child and then continuing my own efforts, I overcame it. Now I'm doing my dream, doing something I thought I couldn't do. Through this process, I've really learned how valuable people are. There's 20 people on the team. I'm just one of them. And I'm hoping to convey some of that through the game's narrative. You have to have growth and you have to have progress. So for us, with One Lonely Outpost, loneliness helps highlight the value of connection. It took us a long time to get here. We put a lot of hard work into it. Shipping games brings tough times, but we've also seen like success together. Success for us is defined as being able to continue to do this because we really love it. We want to be what we know and be the best at that. Making something that people enjoy. Thank you, Freedom Games, for that showcase. Passionate, diverse, different, unexpected, Damon. That's what I would call it. Uh, if you weren't paying attention, Freedom Games is providing 20% of the profits of To the Rescue to the Pet Finder Foundation. And now, gentlemen, it's time to react. I will start with, I'll, I'll, I don't know, maybe I won't speak for everybody. For Greg Miller, I wasn't that familiar with Freedom Games before okay. leading this E3 Same 2021. Mm -hmm. I am now a Freedom Games fan. Hmm. Like, I liked what I saw there. I, Hell yeah. yeah you're, I, you're, you're a Freedom Fighter. And let's not go that far. I'm a lo you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. All right? I'm a freedom lover, <laughs> okay, all right? Yeah. Is that better? Koromon, uh, 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 Cat Cafe Manager, To the Rescue, and then Slaughter League all jump out at me. But you guys are the experts. Dan, what did you like? Well, first, I, give, I have to give it up for To the Rescue. Not only is it sure. a great uh, way to support the Pet Finder Foundation, but I really like that kind of simulation game. You saw me a too. great pairing there. Whether you're a cat fan or a dog fan, you can come together to celebrate these awesome pets with a fun, like, sort of management sim. It looks really up my alley. Um, but I dropped my notes, so I'm just going to stick with those I'm for here, the time I'll get, being. I'll get them for oh, you. thank you so much. You're you a dropped friend. this, King. 
Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, the one I really want to talk about, because Michael and I were geeking oh. out about it, was Dark Deity. Yes. Mm, a strategy yeah. RPG that looks like very up the alley of anyone who likes uh, Fire Emblem mm -hmm. or things like that. Uh, sure. I also like they have an XCOM-esque wound system, which I appreciate. Adds another layer to it, so it looks pretty, pretty exciting. I thought it was cool. There's it was cool pixel art also, but also anime style hand drawn art. That's oh, going along with it too. Don't take that away from me, Damon. Listen, if if y'all want to get my attention with your video game, if you have anime style artwork for your characters, I'll at least give you my time of day. I'll say that. I'll say that much. That so. was the one. I mean, for Dark Deity, you went ooh. I wrote uh, yeah. my only note on Dark Deity is ooh. Mikey likes because <laughs> you liked it. I mean, yeah, and like. And Cat Cafe Manager. Yo, Freedom Games really hit me with my brand. Yeah, for I, sure. I love Cat, dude, it's so cute. You know, cat, cafe, cat Cafe Manager, I've been to a Cat Cafe before. You, right. know, you get a little coffee, you go pet the cats. If, yeah. you're, not, if you're allergic, RIP. But uh, yeah, that's, that was really cute. It's obviously like a tycoon simulator management of course. thing. Uh, and cute cats, say less. Say less. Mm -hmm. Damon, you love cats. Did Cat Cafe Manager work for you? For sure. I've been to many a Cat Cafe, okay. Greg. I have some ideas about how they <laughs> might be run better. Well, here we go. Yeah, we'll yeah. See if you can put proof in the pudding and yeah. you get out there, you manage your own cafe. This fool's lying. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. Oh, oh okay. it's true. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else stand out to you? I mean, the, the games are coming so quickly. It's yeah. You see, like, well, this game looks interesting, and then they're on to the next one. There was a, I think it's fair to say, the Pokemon-like in there. Uh, Mon's even in the title. Koromon. Mon is in the title. Koromon, yeah. I think yeah. there's more to it than that, but there's definitely like animal battling. Well, when it started, like, I was watching and he started like moving puzzles like, oh, I, I wrote very Zelda-like and then it became Pokemon. I was like, oh, very Pokemon-like. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, I got this one wrong. Uh, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, right now you can get out there and vote no matter which platform you're watching. E3 2021 on You Can Vote Right Now. Cat Cafe Manager is winning yeah. narrowly with 32%. Right behind it, Koromon with uh, 26% and then Dreamscaper with 19%. Remember, no matter where you are watching, you can put it into your chat of choice. And if you want to just roll down your window and yell, somebody else will <laughs> jot it down. And we'll figure out how to t tally it up there, right? Yes, Thank sir. You. Um, one also another thing that extend an extension from the indie showcase that we saw, like sure. a lot of experimentation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Even though we saw some things that are kind of like, oh, that reminds me of this. That reminds me of Fire Emblem. That reminds me of Pokemon. They're still putting their spin on it. And like, I like to see those kinds of things in those games. Everyone has an inspiration. So it's exactly. like, I want to make the game like make something similar to the game that I love. So it's you know. all this evolution. I mean, like think about One Lonely Outpost, for example. Yeah. We were we were joking around like, oh, Space Dew Valley, because it does look Stardew Valley inspired, which in turn is inspired by Harvest Moon. So there's a lot more that you can do with this kind of genre, this type of game. No one really gets to be sort of the be all end all of that category or sure. genre. And I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what they can offer here. So it's nice to see a lot of these indie developers wearing their influences on their sleeve. Yes. I was really excited about Slaughter League, for yes. example. Yes. It yes. looks yes. like yes. that kind of competitive madcap fun of a game like Fall Guys, for example, but with the kind of uh, murdery chaos you'd expect from like a Smash TV or like a, um, oh God, uh, oh my, I'm blanking on the name right now, uh, Meat Boy. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny you you mentioned Meat Boy right uh, in the panel before, right in the panel panel before where they were doing the indie games conversation. Ed McMillan talked about the fact that the power of indies is that you don't have to appeal to the mainstream. Yep. And I think that's why this one stands out in terms of a conference so far, and we can all find something else to hone in on, right? Where it's like, yeah, I don't know if To the Rescue, a, a realistic you know sim about running a rescue operation for dogs and cats would stand out in uh, or make sense for a big publisher who has to get a big return on their investment but for this team here that wants to do a dog shelter and wants to have the stuff and wants to you know get profits out there there to people and help yeah, yeah. that's great it's smart of freedom games to in addition to showing trailers or gameplays for for the games to actually put the creators in, in front of the 100 well. yeah. yeah any games can be so much more personal it's it, it's so much more uh one person's vision or a very small team's vision totally yeah, one of the things I loved about it when you were watching there to the, to the rescue is they showed them at PAX, right? And if you've never had the chance to go to a PAX, I urge you to do it and then go to the Indie Mega Booth when we can go, when you can go to things again. Because, yeah, getting to sit there and get a demo from somebody like, oh, what do you do in the game? Like, oh, I, I make I made the it. game. <laughs> it's the most personal way and the best way to get it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when we return, our friends at Venn will give us a special edition of their series, Origin Stories, featuring 100 Thieves founder and CEO, Nadeshot. That and more after this.